the topic is minimum cost spanning tree so for that first of all we'll understand what does it mean by a spanning tree here i have an example graph graph is represented as g and v e v is the set of vertices 1 2 3 4 5 6 and e is the set of edges the set of edges are from 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 3 to 4 and so on graphs are represented as set of vertices and edges now what is this spanning tree spanning tree is a subgraph of a graph since i should take the subset of this so subset of what vertices and edges both the subset or only one subset so i should take the subset of edges vertices must be as it is so i should take all vertices six spanning tree means i should take all vertices then how many edges how many vertices i have number of vertices are n that is six so i should take number of vertices minus one that is only five edges Span tree is a subgraph of a graph having all vertices but only n minus 1 edges. So, out of these edges, I should take only 5. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I did not take this one. So, this is a spanning tree. See, a tree will not have a cycle. So, there is no cycle here. Yes, there is no cycle here. If I, this you can say it's a cycle. If you start from one vertex, you can again reach back to that vertex. But here, there is no cycle. Achha. Is it possible that I will take this one, but I will not take this? Yes, there's also a spanning tree. I will take this, but I will not take this. Yes, this is also a spanning tree. So which edge to select, that is a choice. That is a choice for a spanning tree. So I can say that S is a subgraph of a graph where S is defined as set of vertices and set of edges where set of vertices are same as the vertices of a graph and edges are number of vertices minus 1. So the number of edges are number of vertices minus 1. This is how formally we can divide in mathematics we can define like this. Now next thing. For a given graph, how many different spanning trees can be generated? I want to know that how many different spanning trees are possible. So see, number of edges are how many? 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I have In a spanning tree, I should take only 5. I should take only 5. So 6, C, 5. Out of 6 edges, out of 6 edges, I have to select 5. How many ways I can do that? So 6, 5, C ways. So 5, 6, 5, C is how much? 6 only. So I can have 6 different spanning trees. Just now you can see it is a simple one that I have skipped this edge. Like this I can leave 1, 1 edge, right? And you can form a spanning tree, right? I can take all, accept this, take all, accept this, take all, accept this. 6 are possible. Suppose if I have one more edge now. Now I have seven edges and I want to select five. Now how many spanning trees are possible? See, I have this spanning tree also. Or I can have this spanning tree also. The possibilities are more. Now this is 7C5. 7C5. But this edge will form cycle. So how many cycles it is forming? This is one cycle and this is another cycle. So this edge is forming two cycles of number of vertices less than six. So if it is forming number of vertices less than six, then you so will be seven C five minus two. So that's it. So what's the formula to know how many different spanning trees are possible from a given graph? So whatever the number of edges you have, you should take all those 
and C of how many adjusts you need? You need five. So five is what? Number of vertices minus one. So this is number of vertices minus one and minus number of cycles. You have to subtract number of cycles. I have a graph where the edges are having weights. So this is a weighted graph. This is a weighted graph. I want to know what are the possible spanning trees possible. So I'll draw a few spanning trees. Let us draw one spanning tree. This is vertex 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. So 4 vertices are there. Then how many edges I should take? 4 minus 1, only 3. So I'll select this one. 1, 2, 3. So what is the weight of this one? 5, 3 and 6. So what is the cost of this spanning tree? Cost of this spanning tree is 14. I'll take one more spanning tree. One, two, three, four. And I'll take these edges. Let us see what is the cost of this. Four, six, three. Then what is the cost of this one? Thirteen. I'll take one more spanning tree. One, two, three, four. And I'll take these edges. This one and this one and this one. Four, two and three. So this is, cost is how much? 9. Now, from this example, some observation, we can understand something. If you have a weighted graph and you get different spanning trees, the cost of the spanning trees may be varying. You can get a different cost of spanning trees. Now, the problem is, can I find out the minimum cost spanning tree? Can I find out the minimum one which gives me minimum? Yes, you can find out. How? You can try all possible spanning trees and then from that you can check whichever is minimum, you can pick up that answer. This is one method. Trying all possible spanning trees will be too lengthy. Is there any greedy method? Yes, the greedy methods are available for finding the minimum cost spanning tree. If a weighted graph is given, you can find out the minimum cost spanning tree by following the method without finding out all possible spanning trees. So what are those methods? One method is Prim's algorithm and the second method is Kruskal's algorithm. There are two algorithms for finding minimum cost spanning tree. I have a weighted graph here and I have to find a minimum cost spanning tree by following Prim's algorithm. Let's see how Prim's algorithm works through an example. Now, as per Prim's algorithm, he says that from a graph, first of all, you select a minimum cost edge. So the smallest edge in the entire graph is this one. Then. This is the initial one. Now for the rest of the procedure, always select a minimum cost edge from the graph, but make sure that it should be connected to already selected vertices. Now the next minimum is which one? Three to four. Don't take that. It will not be connected to one or six. So take only those which are connected to one or six. Means what he is trying to do is always maintain a tree. Prims thinks that if some farther away edge is selected, then it may not be forming a tree finally. So that is the reason he suggested that always select a minimum edge which should be connected. So let us see what is the next one. So for this connected one are this one and this one. So out of this 25 and 28, 25 is minimum. So select this 25. Then this 28 and 5 connected to 5 are 22 and 24. So out of this 28, 24 and 22. So from 1 and 6 and 5 I am checking. So already 6 is over. So 1 and 5. So out of those, this is the smallest one. So 4 is selected. Now from 1, 6 and 5, 4, who is smallest? The connected one. So this is 24 and 18 and 12. So 12 is a smaller. So we will take 12. Then out of all these, which connected is the smallest? So here I have 24, 18 and 16. So 16 is the smaller. So take that 16. 
then and out of all these who is next connected so from 2 to 7 there is an edge which is connected so this is 7 that's it there are 7 vertices so 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 edges are selected and this is how we got a minimum cost, cost spanning tree and and this is how we got a minimum cost spanning tree what is the cost of a tree the cost of a tree is if i add all these if i add all these it is 99 so the approach of premises initially select the smallest one then always select the connected smallest one all right so this is the method of prims algorithm next if I have a graph 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If I have a graph like this, which is not connected, there are total 7 vertices, but there are 2 pieces in a graph. Can Prim find out the minimum cost spanning tree for this one? No, no algorithm can find out because we cannot find a tree for this one, spanning tree for this one. In a spanning tree, it must be connected. So for non-connected graph, we cannot find spanning trees at all. But if I start prims on this one, starting from vertex one, if it is starting, then it may find the spanning tree for only one component, not the other component. Next method for finding minimum cost spanning tree is Kruskal's method. This also follows a greedy approach. Instead of trying out all possible spanning trees, it shows a procedure by following which we can get a minimum cost spanning tree. It says that always select a minimum cost edge. Always select a minimum cost edge. Let us follow this one. Let's select smallest edge 1 to 6. That is 10. This one is the smallest. And the next smallest test is 3 to 4. So the second edge I am selecting is 3 to 4 and its cost is 12. Next minimum is 2 to 7. Select 2 to 7 and this is 14. And the next minimum is 2 to 3 that is 16. And after this the next minimum edge is 7 to 4 but that is 18 if I select that it will form a cycle yes Kruskal method says that always select a minimum cost edge but if it is forming a cycle don't include it in the solution discard that edge don't include an edge so it means always select such that it is not forming a cycle so if I include 4 to 7 it will form a cycle so next one you check so the next one is 22 so this is from 5 to 4 or 4 to 5 so this is 22 next minimum is 24 so that is 7 and 5 if i include this also it will form a cycle don't include that one then the next minimum one is 25 that is from 5 to 6 so this is 25 and the cost of this one is if you add all these weights it's 99 so here also I got the same result just how I got in Prim's algorithm. So the Prim's algorithm and Kruskal algorithm has given the same result on this particular graph. Now time taken by Kruskal's algorithm, how much time it takes? See, it has to always select a minimum cost edge from the set of edges. So let us say there are E number of edges. So out of these edges, it will find out the minimum one. And how many such edges it will be selecting? It will be selecting V minus one. Yeah, this number of vertices minus one. So like we know in a spanning tree, if there are seven vertices, we need six edges for forming a spanning tree. So that's seven minus one. So as many vertices we have minus one number of edges we have to select. So the total time will be theta of V into e there e v is number of vertices and e is number of edges so it is n into e n is the number of vertices and e is the number of edges which can also be written as n square if we say both are n then it is n square so the time taken by Kruskal's algorithm is n square but Kruskal algorithm can be improved when we have to always select a minimum cost edge, then there is one data structure which will always give you minimum value. That is min heap. 
if min heap is used then min heap will always give you a minimum value whenever you delete a value you get a minimum value so if all these edges are kept in a min heap whenever you delete you will be getting a next minimum edge so you don't have to search so from min heap whenever you delete the time taken is log n so how much time it will take for finding a minimum cos edge log n time so how many times you have to do that that is n time number of vertices minus one time so n so by using min heap the time com time complexity of critical algorithm will be n log n so that's how critical algorithm can be made faster now if there is a graph given that is not connected graph it is having two components four vertices on this side five vertices on that side can we find a spanning tree on a non-connected graph no spanning tree is not possible but what happens if I run a Kruskal's algorithm? So Kruskal algorithm will try to find out total number of edges that is 9 minus 1. So it will try to select 8 edges and it will not be forming a spanning tree for entire graph but it may be finding the spanning tree for each component. Let us say if the first minimum the one it will select is this one then the next minimum it is having more than one edges let us say it selects next minimum and the next minimum it will select this next minimum it selects this and this is the next minimum so in this way it is selecting the minimum edges from both the components or it will be selecting from all the components so it may be finding spanning trees for all the components but not for the entire graph so critical algorithm may work for non-connected graphs also but it may give spanning tree for those components let us take a problem here a graph is given and the weights of the edges are also given but here two edges are not having their weights if i take only these edges which are having a weight they are forming a spanning tree of a graph just hide these two edges it becomes a spanning tree now the question is what could be the minimum values of these two edges what could be the minimum possible value maximum it can be anything but at least what could be the value see as this is included in a spanning tree this is included in a spanning tree this is not included because it is forming a cycle so it is forming a cycle if it is included this will form a cycle so it may be considered after selecting these two after selecting these two so the weight of this could be four Right? First this is selected, then this is selected, then this is not selected means definitely it is 4. If it is less than 4, then that would have been selected first. Right? So it came later, so it is forming a cycle, so it is not taken. Then this 4 is taken, then this 4 is taken, this 5 is taken. So then what could be the minimum weight of this one? So it is not selected, at last it is left over means minimum weight of this one could be 6. So this is 4 and that is 6. So if any missing edges are there, you can find out these type of problems we find in examinations. So some missing edges you can find out. So if you know spanning tree, you can answer this type of question. Let us take this example and let us find out spanning tree for this one. Minimum cause is spanning tree. So if I follow Kruskal's method, so first I will select the minimum cause edge. This edge I have selected. Then the next minimum is this three and that three. So I can select any one. So I'll select this one first this is selected next i'll select this one so is it forming a cycle inclusion of this one no so i'll select that one then which are the edges four and four these two are there so i can select any one so i'll select this one whether this will form any cycle no so total how many edges i have selected one two three four and total how many vertices are there five vertices are there so four edges are selected that's how i got a spanning tree so what's the cost of the spanning tree two plus three plus three plus four and this is 12. spanning tree is a minimization result so definitely there will be only one result so for a problem there can be only one optimal solution so we should have exactly one spanning tree only there cannot be more than one spanning tree right but in this example you can see instead of taking this four this edge i can take this four also now also it's forming a spanning tree yes so i can select one more but what is the cost cost is 12 so cost is only one 
the optimal cost is 12 only you will get definitely only one answer in the minimization or maximization problem but for that answer the set of input may be changing so either you can include this four or this four so total how many spanning trees are trees are possible two spanning trees are possible but what is the minimum cost that is 12. 